One of the unique things in Dragon's Dogma is that instead of multiplayer, it has a pawn system. Your friends create these pawns, which you can then go into the rift and summon them at any time. Your friends. Or the pawns they create, not your friends. You don't summon your friends at any time. That would not be good. Finally, it's happened to me for... Ah! What the fuck? I didn't... Ah! Ah! I summoned a pawn! Ah! Yeah, okay, <laughs> so Dragon's Dogma, it's kind of hard to describe, so let me show you. So picture this, you take The Elder Scrolls, Shadow of Colossus, Monster Hunter, Devil May Cry, and even a bit of Dark Souls, put it in a pot and mix it all together and you're gonna get a brand new RPG. And guess what you're gonna get? You're gonna get Dragon's Dogma, that's right! Dragon's Dogma. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, almost a little too good to be true. So unfortunately, the game does its best to try to ruin your good experience. I really think there's this really fantastic award-winning game here behind all of the flaws, fully capable of being better than its competition. Without a doubt, it's got some great concepts. No other RPG does boss battles quite like this, bringing over the mechanic from Shadow of Colossus. You know, climbing and interacting with the bosses in real time. Taking this and putting it with an RPG is a match made in heaven. Instead of hacking away at the ankles of monsters and dragons. You know what? I'm gonna slay you. I actually feel how tough and how drag out these epic boss battles would be if they were real. With the grab system, you can climb onto bosses and hit their weak points for massive damage. All while trying to hold on for your dear life. Yeah, there are a few glitches that kind of make it look hilarious at times. I mean, I look like I'm crawling up his butt here. Go, 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 go. I'm go, trying go. to climb his movement. <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. You're going up his butt, dude. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> there you go. But it is so much fun. And you're always excited and pumped to see what next boss creature you're going to encounter, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday play. But, but the game has three major flaws that hold it back from being more legendary. First, there's no effective fast travel. Now, now, before you say you're one of those that loves no fast travel, no! You listen to me here. You don't know what you're asking for. This game is huge! It's Skyrim, or Oblivion sized. The problem is unlike those, everything is so spread out and so sparsely populated. You'll be trekking for miles over and over to get to the same places. Nearly every quest. And there is no mounts or horses to get you around from 
place to place within a reasonable amount of time? No, you have to run the whole way and see your character exhausted at least 27 times there and back, making the game a chore to play after the first 10 hours. After you've revealed everything. But what's worse is that enemies spawn in the same locations, most of them. So what you're gonna be doing back and forth between these long distances is fighting the same enemies in the same places. Does that sound fun to you? I'll provoke it! No, because it puts more repetition on top of backtracking. There are what's called fairy crystals, which I'm sure many of you are gonna bring up, but they are so rare and they cost between 10 to $20,000. They only bring you back to the capital or when you lay down a portal throughout the world, it's not good enough. There might as well not be one. It needs to be a default system. The second major flaw after fast travel is your AI teammates, your pawns. Now the pawn idea is really cool, like a trading Pokemon mechanic, except they don't fight each other. And the best part is that when you sleep and wake up, your pawn comes back with more experience and loot and a gift from the borrowing player. How did I perform? I tried my hardest. But the problem is, is that their AI algorithms are just terrible. Most notably with the way it conveys information to you. It is unbelievable how many times they repeat themselves in battle. Screaming goblins four or five times over the course of 15 seconds is unacceptable. They try to make them feel alive as they share knowledge, but what it ultimately does, it's overdone and it detracts from the experience. So, between backtracking for hours while your pawns never shut the hell up the whole fucking way as you fight the 15 fucking bandits that you fought already 12 times, it, Dragon's Dogma is enough to drive anyone insane. The grand structure. Follow this road north and we'll hit Grand Soaring. The sea is closer than I'd imagined. We'll likely face ambush here. Stay watchful. Hit a large tree. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! The best you can do, aside from shutting off all voices in the game, which is not something you want to do, is to go into the options, turn off the prompts on your screen, which obstruct way too much. I highly recommend turning these off. And then sit your pawn down in a knowledge chair and basically tell him to shut the f up. Jacob, I brought you here today because I want you to shut the fuck up. Understood. I shall be more reticent in the future. But that won't stop the other two in your party. When they yell out monster strategies and quest stuff, it works. For everything else, it doesn't. No more complaining, no more Mr. Kimblev to go to the bathroom, nothing. There is no bathroom! It's as if nobody play tested this for any extended period of time and said, yeah, we kind of need to taper this down a bit. Or at least an option to only hear it when asked from the pawn. Aside from those two problems that stand out immediately, Dragon's Dogma third and final flaw is perhaps its biggest. It is really hard to find an interesting story or quest line throughout the whole game, which is a pretty important aspect, which helps you to push through the grind. A dragon steals your heart and yet you live somehow for some reason. And that is about the most original story here. Oh, wait. His blade defends the helpless. His might upholds the weak. His word speaks only truth. Shut up! The problem here is that the quest lines are so dull that it's hard to tell what is a side quest and what is a main story quest because both are so equally yawn-inducing. Those things work against the game's favor, but there are a lot of things that do work. For one, the game's presentation. 
which I really liked and it helps prop this average story up. You get cinematic in-game cutscenes that feature your customized character exactly the way he looks in the game. Unfortunately, that same time and effort wasn't put into the in-game NPCs. Character models are, are undetailed, sort of like Dragon Age 2, and the whole world has this sort of washed out look to it. Character lip syncing is awful. In fact, there is none. It's as if the people are moving their mouths like a marionette when they talk. The whole village was worried about you. They'd be well relieved to see you up and about. Perhaps you might go and see the others, if you feel well enough. And finally, another annoying thing is you only have one save file in an open world RPG that encourages so much experimentation, it is absolutely unforgivable to have a single save file. So then why do I still like this game, despite all of its flaws. Is there something wrong with me? No, because if you could suffer through all of those things, the game really kicks it up a notch for its boss battles, fast action-oriented combat, and its extremely flexible class system, all of which are extremely well done and where all the fun in the game lies. The RPG elements are pretty deep, and the customization options are extensive. Basic classes unlocked first, with advanced classes unlocked for purchase later. And the best part is, once you unlock one of the advanced vocations, you have that vocation forever and can switch to it at any time, allowing you to find your favorite. A strider is fast as hell with interesting stuns, like Spider-Man. A warrior brings the pain with massive two-handed weapons and abilities that go along with that. Mages and sorcerers are the most flexible, empowering the rest of their team with fire or ice weapons, or devastating spells of their own which are suited to taking out bosses. And there are even small dynamic touches put into the game, like your AI holding an enemy pawn into place for you to gut him, or flinging you into the air with a sword so you can attack flying enemies, or the simple joy of tossing bandits off a cliff, even getting soaked with water when you walk under waterfalls, or oil, both for some devastating effects when combined with other in-game items. All that with your basic attacks and your special attacks that are mapped to the shoulder buttons per class makes for a ton of variation here. Opportunities for unique play styles and strategies are nearly limitless, and that's what this game does well, better than most. The game even has a day-night cycle about every 30 minutes, and at night things can get pretty brutal with more dark enemies like zombies and ghosts showing up in true Capcom style. And backing all this up is a really well done score for the appropriate situations. And hell, even that completely out of place J-pop song that's on the menu screen started to grow on me after a while.
Dragon's Dogma is a game that accomplishes its main goals. Revolutionizing boss battles in RPGs, quick time events are no longer acceptable. This is how you battle an epic creature, you see? has also brought the Devil May Cry style action oriented combat that's fast and fluid and makes this combat arguably better than its competitors. But there are just so many basic RPG 101 things that were missed here, probably lost in translation or due to the developer's inexperience with western type RPGs. Now some of these can be fixed in patches, but others are probably gonna require a sequel. If Capcom would include fast travel and patch the pawns, they would increase the fun factor by 10. They would hide the respawn deficiencies over long treks and reduce the monotony in this game tremendously. But as it stands now, Dragon's Dogma is a very solid 7 out of 10. I'm being generous here because I really, really wanted to love Dragon's Dogma. I wanted to issue it a badass seal of approval. Unfortunately, it's too difficult to make that type of assure you recommendation. For the 60 plus hours that you'll be engaging in the main story plus side quests, you're gonna be switching off between frustration, utter frustration, and jubilation when you fight bosses and engage in the combat. I'd say if you're an RPG fan and, and you like what you've seen here with the Shadow of Colossus stuff and the Devil May Cry type combat, and it's got, you know, a few hardcore elements of Dark Souls, it's a brutal game, it's not gonna hold your hand through it, then definitely you must experience it, even if solely to see just how epic creatures should be fought in a game. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. Just summon them at any time. You can summon them at any time. That was a bad time. That was a bad time. Slay you. Now I'm gonna marry the princess. <laughs>